You can be the smartest person in the world, and if you can't communicate what you believe, you're not going to be very successful. So you do need a message, and that message better be why, why you believe what you believe, but you also need a very effective manner or method of communication. In other words, you need to learn how to persuade. How do you persuade in life? facts, authenticity, sincerity, credibility. You want to persuade, change people's minds to come around to your way of thinking on whatever issue it is, and I don't care about your politics. They're none of my business. You can have whatever politics you want. But I will tell you what doesn't work, insulting people. Any of you been married for more than a week? <laughs> Any of you aspire to be married at any point in life? Let me give you a piece of free advice after 25 years of marriage. Insulting people does not work if your objective is to persuade. Uh, I am terrified of my wife, so I have never tried to insult her into changing her mind, but I have seen plenty of my friends try it. And it does not work. Look, I did not vote for President Obama. I didn't, no, no, I didn't, I, I didn't vote for him. I didn't vote for him. But you know what? A majority of my fellow citizens did. So when I see a bumper sticker that says, I didn't, don't blame me, I didn't vote for the idiot, do you think that's persuasive? Do you think anybody that voted for President Obama is going to be persuaded, yeah, maybe I possibly made a mistake because this person called me an idiot? Life doesn't work that way. You know what happens when you're insulted? You become even more dogmatic in holding your incorrect belief than you were before you were insulted. So if your goal is to persuade, if your goal is to persuade, you shouldn't be insulting people. Let me tell you what else doesn't work. Hypocrisy. Telling other people how to live their lives, but you live your life a different way. Telling people that they ought to be doing X while you're doing Y. And trust me, I work in a line of work where I see a lot of it. And yes, we're all hypocrites to a certain extent, every one of us. But there are different gradations of hypocrisy. And if you are going to say that the Lord called you to go into politics, you better act like it. And if you're not going to act like it, then leave his name out of it. <laughs> Furthermore, furthermore, I want you to ask yourself this. These candidates that are called by God to run for office, are their campaigns any different than the people who weren't called by God? Do they engage in negative campaigning? Do they launch unfair attack ads? Can you tell anything different about them than you can the candidates who just say, I'm running because I felt like running? They claim to serve a God that used a stutterer as a spokesperson. They claim to serve a God that let his own son lose a race to a guy named Barabbas, but they don't act like it. You want to persuade people? Hypocrisy doesn't work. Insults don't work. What does work? A relationship. The person has to know that you care about them. They have to know that you care about them. There are two people in politics that I think do a wonderful job of that, and I don't care whether you support either one of them. One is Marco Rubio. Marco Rubio. Marco Rubio was raised by a woman that cleaned other people's hotel rooms. But she had hope. She had hope that her son would have a better life, and now he's in the United States Senate. And the other person who does a wonderful job of communicating hope is a guy named Tim Scott, who is, my, who is my best friend in politics. And Tim Scott's grandfather 
who's now 94, would hold the newspaper up every morning at breakfast, wanted Timmy to see him reading the newspaper because of the value of education, the power of education, wanted Timmy to be informed, wanted him to be up on current events. So he held the newspaper up every single morning, except he couldn't read. Can't, can't read to this day. But he wanted to communicate hope to his grandson about the power of education. You want to persuade people? Do you speak in hopeful terms? Do you communicate hope? Are they convinced that you have their best interest at mind? Last fall, my wife made me go to a wedding with her. Let me rephrase that. My wife and I went to a wedding last fall. <laughs> and I was watching a, a football game on my iPhone, but I, <laughs> it's the only way I agreed to go. Look, if you want me at your wedding, don't plan it in the fall in the South. <laughs> so I'm watching the football game, and I hear that same verse I hear at every other wedding. These three things remain, faith, hope, and love. The greatest of these is love. We already knew that. I, I knew that. Comes right before the unity candle. But I started thinking to myself, okay, love wins. I get that. I know that. But hope must be really powerful to even be in the final three. Do you talk in hopeful terms? Do the people that you interact with and you're trying to persuade, do you communicate hope? Do they think you care about them? So you got a message. You got a manner of communicating. 